see how that affects. And um, you go, I want to hear your, your take on like uh, Mookie Betts and teams that have traded prospects away for, for maybe a, a free agent to be that they, they might only get for, you know, hundred games or so. Yeah. Um, it, uh, we talked before the call, but uh, about this, but that's one of the things I'm fascinated. And I know you don't know the answer to the service time thing. That's all that, you know, but people that don't think about this, an MLB season to qualify for it is 172 days, right? Yeah. 171, 72. So uh, that's why you get into the whole Chris Bryant service time issue that you had that just got settled where uh, the, the Cubs held him back and um, for two weeks to work on his defense and that delayed the <laughs> service time. So what's going to happen with all these guys on a shortened season? You don't know. I'm sure MLB and the Players Association don't know yet. They're going to have to hash it out. But this could be in some weird way a blessing for the Dodgers if, if the owners stand strong on service time where the Dodgers could control him for 2020 and 2021 if they, if they don't change the amount of service time days. And that's just that moving. could uh, that could cost a player a lot of money compounding that for like the contract that he is, uh, you know, hopefully in, in line for. But, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, a lot of things in, on the contract side of that becomes prorated, um, you know, during during previous years. And the guys has, a you know, an at bat uh, bonus in his in his contract where you can kind of prorate it based on the amount of. Uh, games he's played at bats and take that bonus and um, you know divide and, and get the get the numbers from there but I, I would hope that there would be some sort of resolution where you know 172 days for a full year service time could become you know prorated if it's a hundred game season and a guys up for you know 70 games like you'd have to take that 70 percent of 172 days and hopefully give them that that amount because we all know how important service time is for players, you know, earning towards that next contract. And I think that's something that the players are hopefully going to hold, uh, hold the owners like feet to the fire when next, next uh, bargaining or uh, next time the bargaining agreements up, which is after, after next year. And then we'll see, you know, because that's a, a huge issue, obviously with not only Chris Bryant, but you see all these like, you know, young studs getting, getting held back for, for reasons that are a little bit odd. So, yeah, we, we've been talking some about how big this next collective bargaining is going to be um, because they've had relative peace for what three, three bargaining contracts mm -hmm. that, um, that this is so contentious to begin with that I almost might see the owners trying to hold strong on this to just show them that they've still got clout. Cause you know that there's going to be stuff that they have to give up on. Yeah, there's always like the give and take. And um, it's funny, like one of the things that I've obviously acted in is like uh, amateur draft and guys like, you know, having to come up through the, the system like at a young age. Like, I, I hope there's just a lot of resolution from top to bottom. But, um, you know, they're not willing like when you're when you're thinking of as a player rep and you're a guy that has service time and you're already gotten a contract and you're part of the. The, you're at the negotiating table like you don't have your thoughts on the young guys and like the next generation and the guys that are coming after you so we'll see i think there's um good leadership going through right now uh in the union and it'll be you know their second wave of of uh negotiating tony clark and those and the guys that he has running the show over there but i think they'll um you know hopefully stand strong and really figure out the kind of the key issues because obviously last time around with the qualifying offer and how you know the free agents have been been handled it's kind of showed that there was some inconsistencies in how like i guess it was bargained yeah it you know that was a funny one uh the qualifying offer i the players thought it was fair at first and then they figured out after a couple of years <laughs> that the owners found yeah. a really creative way to screw them over 100 percent. yeah was, that was that's something that I, I think and hope that would be eliminated, but obviously to, to, to take on something, you got to give up something else and we'll see. It's going to be, like you said, one of the, one of the more interesting times.